video, we're going to talk a little bit about game design and some intricacies of the classes used in Enchant.js. So first, game design. What do you do when you start developing a game? What is the process of game development here? Well, you have to choose the theme of the game. That's very important. You have to decide the minimum specs of the game. You need to make it, and then you play it. And then the most important part is you need to refine it. So you consider some things about it, and then you repeat from step two on. You just keep going and going. So how do you choose your theme? That's a great question. Well, you want to choose something, at least for your first game, that's easy to program. So it's easy to imagine the programming code for. Don't be afraid to be a copycat. That is the main message here. It's a great way to start, especially. So you should start coding before you start overthinking it, and then you can always refine it later. So that's the thing. You want something simple that you can get going with pretty quickly, and then you can always refine it later and add things, add new features, delete ones that you don't need. You can change the graphics, story, and details, and then you go from there. The important thing is you don't need to know everything just yet. I mean, you don't know everything yet, obviously, but that's okay. Um, you just need to get started. So, main message here is you must be a genius copycat, not create everything from scratch. So, my personal opinion, I would say go out to maybe 9leap.net, which is the site where all of our um, user community, at least in Japan, and growing ever bigger outside of Japan, in the United States, Europe, and everywhere else. Um, so go to 9leap.net, pull up a game, a game that looks interesting, and look at the source code. You can always right-click and click Inspect Element and look at that source code for yourself. So no one is necessarily a great creator, per se, just a genius copycat. I mean, look at the number of games that are out there that um, play off of each other and refine and refine and refine. That's how we get genres. For for instance, RTS, real-time strategy, you can have like StarCraft, StarCraft II, and Warcraft. We have all of these different genres that build off of each other from predecessors in the genre. So my point is, feel free to be influenced by other games when you are um, designing a game. So back to the, the development uh, timeline. So you, you have decided on a theme. What are you going to do next? Well, you're going to sketch your ideas, and there are different tools you can use to sketch your ideas. You can use like a moleskin notebook, or even like construction paper and a pen, or you can use a tablet, you can use an iPad. So looking at an example of a sketch here, um, this is a sketch of a game in Japanese with annotations in English here. And you can see that we have um, apples that come across, and bears run after the apples. And um, the point is, apples are a precious resource in this game, so you want to hit the bears before they get the apples. And the more apples that you can accumulate and save, the better you will do. So if we have this as our basic sketch, and go through some basic programming to get this into the format of an enchant.js game, it would look something like this. So when all the bear apples are eaten by bears and the game is over, how many bears can you hit? Bears appear from the sides. So you polish your sketch, you refine your ideas, but here we have three annotations. And those three annotations correspond to probably the most important aspects that you need to keep in mind when you're developing your game. Those three aspects are how the game ends, so here we have when all apples are eaten by bears and the game is over, how the game ends. Um, the basic behavior of what's on the screen, so bears appear from the sides. And finally, how a score is accumulated or the winning condition or whatever. How many bears can you hit? So that is the scorekeeping strategy there that people will want to play again and again trying to beat scores from previous times or scores of other individuals. Next, what you need to do after you have your sketch and you've decided on your theme is you need to check out your materials. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult parts 
when you are starting out as a beginning game developer because you're not going to have many materials to work with. I know when I started, I thought, well, I can't draw at all, so how, how is this going to work? But Enchanted S comes with a very large royalty-free image library full of sprite sheets and images you can use for your games. So here you can see Kara1.png is one of them that has an assortment of bears for you to use. And there's Icon0.gif, which has so many different uh, things in here, from fruit, to animals, to dice, to lasers, to gems, to everything. everything. So, so uh, it's good. But you need to be careful about the geometry, um, and I guess dimensions is a better way to say that. You need to be careful of your dimensions, because you'll notice here that Kara1.png has 32 by 32. So each frame in here is 32 pixels by 32 pixels. Each frame in icon0.gif is 16 pixels by 16 pixels. Now if you remember from our last talk about sprites, when you create a sprite, like for instance when we create a bear, we have to say bear equals new sprite, and then we pass two arguments, 32 by 32. If, for instance, we created bear as 3232 and accidentally brought in icon zero, you would not only have the problem of having the wrong image, but it would be the wrong size. So instead of having a brown bear, if you loaded in icon zero.gif for that bear sprite that you've created, instead of a brown bear, you'll have one, two banana grape, and that just won't help you at all. So watch the dimensions of your sprites and sprite sheets when you bring in these, um, these images from the image library. Alright, so the second part of this video is classes. You have to master your classes in Enchant.js. It is the secret weapon of the program ninja. Um, so basically, in the sketch that you have created for your game, you're going to have several different characters and maybe some items, some weapons on the screen, something on the screen. Each sort of class or group of objects on the screen, let's say enemies or in this case bears and apples is going to be a class. So you have class bear and class apple in this case. So character designs become classes. What you can do is you can save yourself some time. In the second video on sprites, we talked about how you can create a bear and then you say, well, create a bear as in the sense of a sprite and then designate this image for it and place it here and give it this event listener and do this. That's only for one bear. If you want a second bear and a third bear, you need to recreate that entire process. You have to rewrite all of that code for the second and third bear. You don't want to do that. So what you can do instead, because it is Enchant.js is class-based, is you can create your own class. So here we're creating a bear class, and we're saying class.create. So create a class based off of sprite, and when you create a new bear, um, it should be created as a sprite, as though we were calling a new creation, a new instance of a sprite, designated as 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And the other code we need to call is this.image equals game.assets kara1.png. So what does this do? Why, why would we want to do this? Well, in this way, we could say bear1 equals new bear, and we don't have to pass any arguments. We've already We've already passed this 32 and 32 to sprite inside of bear class. So we create new bear, and then bear2 could be bear2 equals new bear, bear3 equals new bear. And on each of those bears, we've already determined that they're 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And we've already designated that the image for them should be caravan.png. We're saving ourselves code here. And that is why you want to use classes in Enchant.js, and this is how you do it. So classes can inherit from actual Enchant.js classes. Um, you can also inherit from other classes that you've created inside of the game. Um, but normally when you're extending classes, you're going to be, um, or creating classes rather, you're going to be creating them as extensions of the sprite class, just most of the time, most of the time. So you can create your own class here. This is, we're inheriting from the sprite class, like I said before. Here's where you put the name of your class, just to reiterate, and this is the constructor of the bear class. So when we say constructor, um, that is invoked every time you create a new instance of this class. So anytime you say blank equals new bear, all of this code will be executed because it's in the initialize function or the constructor. 
So like I said before, here is an actual representation of creating a new bear class, a new instance of the bear class right here, the red bear equals new bear. And notice how much shorter it's gotten. Before we had bear equals new sprite, 32 comma 32, and we had bear.image equals game.assets, caro1.png. We saved ourselves almost two lines of code by creating that class. So it's very easy and useful. We can do even more with these classes. You can add event listeners to these classes. As you can see here, here's our initialized function, but underneath here, we've created an onEnterFrame event, and this is the syntax for an event listener inside of a uh, class, is onEnterFrame colon function. And so this function will get executed whenever the onEnterFrame occurs. So whenever the enterFrame occurs. So here we're saying this.x plus equals one. So what does this do? Anytime we create a bear, and we add it to the root scene, and we start the game, every single frame, this x value will increase by one. So this bear will move across the screen just like the label we saw in earlier videos. So that's, that's pretty cool right there. Save you some time. You can add as many of these event listeners as you want. So not just an on enter frame event, but also an on touch end, or on the touch end frame event. Uh, when a user clicks on let's go of a bear, um, this dot frame equals three. We saw this in a video earlier where we changed the frame of the bear from zero to three, and so it changed from just your brown bear chilling, hanging out, doing nothing, to the crying bear. So here we've combined those two, so it'll be moving across the screen, and if you click it, the frame will change. But you're going to have to, you know, be careful or be quick about how you click it because it's going to be moving across the screen, right? So um, let's go back to our sketch with all of these things. So we have bears, and they appear, and they try to get the apples. And um, you've already started saving yourself some time because you've created the bear class. And the next step would most likely be to create uh, an item class as where you're bringing as a sprite, where you're bringing in this image of an apple and saving yourself some time by doing that. So that's how you use um, classes, classes that you've created to save yourself time when programming games with Enchant.js. And just as a note, you can download all of these slides from this presentation from our Facebook page. Just search Enchant.js on Facebook and it'll come up. Thanks for watching.